Hey YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today let's talk a little bit about the difference in how you vacuum sand versus a, uh, a tank that has either gravel or uh, crushed coral or shells or pebbles. Let's take a look at the difference between vacuuming a tank that has a very uh, tight, compact substrate like sand versus one that is loose and allows detritus to get in between and down deep. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in and let's get right to it. First thing I do is uh, some general housekeeping. And by that, what I mean is uh, I'll go ahead and clean the, the panels, in this case, the acrylic panels. You'll notice I'm using a, uh, a scraper that is white. And if I understand it correctly, the white scrapers are good and safe for acrylic and the blue ones are a little more coarse and they're more designed for glass tanks. At least that's what the guy at the uh, local fish store told me. Uh, maybe the white ones were just more expensive and he was trying to make more profit. I don't know. <laughs> but at any rate, I use the uh, white, white sponge type uh, scrapers on my acrylic tanks and the blue ones on glass tanks. One thing you have to watch out when cleaning any kind of uh, panel, acrylic or glass, is to make sure you don't have any pieces of substrate, see the way I shake it out there. So be sure you uh, don't let anything get trapped in there because that will then be an abrasive, just like a very coarse sandpaper, and it will scrape the glass and will very much scrape the acrylic. Acrylic, of course, is much softer and will scrape much easier. So I do a real good job with the panels, making sure I, uh, I hit any areas that might have any buildup of algae and uh, any kind of film gets cleaned up and uh, and that way it'll probably settle on the bottom and then I'll go ahead and uh, and clean it all up with the vacuuming. I try not to move too fast because of course it startles the fish. I don't want them darting around, banging against things and getting too uh, too stressed out in this process. Remember, whenever you do any kind of maintenance or move anything around your tank, you are uh, creating stress for your fish. And stress is uh, never a good thing for these guys. It usually is the uh, something that seems to be a common denominator when I was studying some of the diseases that fish can get. Very often, the uh, one of the things that came up was usually follows stress, either being transferred, uh, moved from tank to tank, sudden changes in temperature, shifts in pH, uh, aggression, bullying, things of this nature. Anything that is uh, producing stress with your fish can end up uh, predisposing them to disease. So I try not to, uh, not to frighten them too much. So I take kind of a slow approach here. At any rate, I get it all uh, nice and clean. And uh, in some cases, I have to move and uproot some of the plastic plants and decor and also uh, keep in mind when you're vacuuming that a lot of things can get down below your decor, especially if you have a coarse substrate such as pebbles, rocks, uh, big chunks of crushed coral. Detritus will work its way under your decor. You see right here I'm cleaning some of the algae off the plants. But the, uh, that it'll surprise you when you lift up one of the rocks how much stuff actually can work its way underneath even though you have it pushed all the way down to the base of the tank. It's amazing how much you'll get under there. I had an Aquion system and I kept having trouble with it so I ended up getting some, uh, some of the Python uh, equipment. The Python hose is a little bit thicker and I had the old 50-foot Aquion. So to get it to fit on the Python what I do is I run very, very hot water over the end of the hose. And that way it softens the, uh, it softens the hose. And then I can, uh, I can go ahead and, and uh, connect it and get it so it goes over, even though it's uh, probably about an, a 16th or an eighth of an inch too small technically. And then I'll run a little bit of cold water so it'll contract, so it'll stay on there and doesn't pop off when I'm doing a, uh, a water change. A little tip if you're trying to get an Aquion hose onto a python onto a python tube you can use that tip. 
I used to uh, connect to the faucet and run the faucet while I was vacuuming. Now I just get a regular, uh, looks like I'm hitting the crack pipe there, but it looks like I, um, I, I just get a regular siphon going and I drop the end into the, uh, into the shower basin and you can see the water's running out and uh, that's the way I just get the siphon going rather than just running the water or getting a weak siphon with the, over the sink. If you look at this tank, you would say this is pretty clean. It looks actually in pretty good shape. But like I mentioned in my prior video, uh, when we talked about different kinds of substrate, this substrate is very forgiving. And by that, what I mean is it can actually hide detritus, especially if it's white. You can actually have a lot going on. And you'll see when I start vacuuming, vacuuming here, how much actually gets pulled up. When you vacuum this type of substrate, you should work your way down into it. Because like I said, a lot of the waste will, go, will, will work its way down. And so I'll move, I'll move things around, I'll push down in, I'll hover over certain areas for a little bit of time, and I'll, especially if they're very, if they're very, uh, very thick with waste. And the areas that, that have the greatest amount of waste are the ones that are usually um, have something blocking them. In other words, when, when the uh, power head, I have a very powerful high door power head on the left bottom side of the tank, and that pushes a lot of the detritus towards the intake of the 704B and also the, uh, the overflow box. But so things that are blocking that have a, a lot of waste usually behind them. You can see here how much I'm pulling up from behind the, uh, the rock on the far side of the tank that doesn't get uh, the pressure from the high door. Going over to sand, you'll see on sand what you do is you do not dig in. If you dig in, you'll suck that sand up, up the tube. So instead, what you do is you just do a light skim, staying a little bit above the surface of the sand, and you just pick up what has settled on the top. And most of the detritus is being pushed by a uh, 16 or 1800 gallon per hour power head and is being pushed to the left and being sucked up into the, into the uh, fluval, into the fluval system. But you can see some of the areas that where the detritus can settle and be blocked by the pressure of the power head. So the power head pressure doesn't move it. So I move that stuff around and I, I'm able to pick up some of the detritus and waste that's there. There is one pocket here in the back corner, actually both back corners of the tank, you can see here, will be uh, sort of collection points or places where the detritus will settle. But overall, when you look at this at the sand, especially the, when you realize, you know, when you consider that it's black and shows every speck, it's actually in real, real good shape. So the combination of the power head and the uh, fluval are doing a real good job at just getting everything sucked up. The power head is on a timer because I don't want the fish being blown around 24 seven. So it's on for about six, six to eight hours a day at intervals and it is off at night when they're sleeping. And I try and time it so that it's off when I feed them so it doesn't blow the food all around or blow the food towards the intakes of the filter. But you can see it's in pretty good shape now. Looks pretty clean. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, after cleaning this side up, I'll go ahead and go over to the other side, which is the um, where I have most of the artificial plants and rocks. And uh, I'll go ahead and, and clean that one up as well. And that one will also collect. I also stir it up sometimes, not every time, probably every other, every other time I vacuum, I might go ahead and rake the sand, making sure not to kick it up too high. I don't want it getting into the intake. Now, some people say this will release any gas pockets that might exist that can occur or, or um, happen below sand. It can actually hold gas pockets and that gas can be uh, toxic. So it's a good idea to occasionally rake the sand and release any gas. 
I've never had any, uh, I've never seen any bubbles or any kind of gas release when I've raked the sand. Uh, if you know about that, go ahead and, and comment below. But I, uh, I like raking it anyway because it seems to give it a, a nice, um, kind of adds to the cleaning. And if anything settles after I've raked, I go ahead and uh, touch it up and clean that up as well. If you know anything about that, about those gas pockets, comment below. I'll turn that one over to the Congo gang. <laughs> Before I wrap up the, uh, the vacuuming, in order to be able to get this, this mess rolled up nicely, because as you know, if you use one of these long hoses, it can actually be very difficult to roll up because it can get stiff and out of shape. So I run very, very hot water through it and kind of cleans it out a little bit, but I run really, really hot water for just about maybe 30 seconds, never more than a minute. And uh, that, what that does, of course, is it softens up the hose and, uh, and then allows me to go ahead and, and roll it up so that it's uh, nice and neat. You can see here it rolls up nice and tight. Sometimes I'll uh, put a, a Velcro strap on it just to keep it uh, in place and uh, put it in a plastic bag and store it. So there you have it, a tank that is nice and clean and a happy fish with reduced nitrates and uh, better living circumstances. So um, I hope uh, this helped and uh, I hope it helps you in your uh, decision as to whether or not you wanna go with sand or gravel or crushed coral or something coarse, um, okay? So um, when cleaning, uh, use common sense. Don't think you're gonna get every single piece of fish poop. Right after you're done cleaning, you're gonna see some stuff floating around and if you obsess over it, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. The production of waste is 24 seven, okay? So the truth is, is you're never gonna catch up and have a tank that has no poop, no waste in it. And as a matter of fact, if that did happen, you'd have a dead ecosystem, okay? So um, don't obsess, get it clean to a point that is acceptable and sensible, and then sit down and enjoy the aquarium like I'm about to do right now, okay? Thank you for tuning in. You are appreciated. Sometimes after a water change, I'll give them a treat, like some frozen krill. They're all, they're all kind of hanging out here, staring at me, wondering if they're gonna get their after water change treat. Also after a water change, the uh, Venusis will assert his control and uh, And we'll go ahead and start chasing people around, but it'll calm down after about an hour. When the Venusis is fired up, Polystigma wants no part of him. So he'll hang in the greenery and be very still. I'm not a fish, I'm just a rock. Just ignore me.